we are uh, prepared for our seven days of prayer. And let's go over to the book of Acts chapter 4. And each night we're not going to teach very long, just for a few minutes, and then we're going to pray. The Lord keeps really lighting on this issue of united prayer, united prayer. And uh, there are things that he wants to do in this fellowship, this body, this fellowship this year. And uh, we're going to enter into them from the first. It's not something that we're going to enter into on down the road. It's, it's going to be from the beginning. And uh, in Acts chapter 4, beginning in verse 23. Now, you'll remember the, the setting here that Peter and John had been, uh, the Lord had healed the lame man at the gate beautiful through them. And then they had straightly threatened them. Uh, not to preach or teach anymore in, in the name of Jesus. And verse 18, it says, They called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. And, uh, but then verse 23 says, Being let go, they went to their own company and reported all the chief priests and elders had said to them. So they went to their own company. Uh, the Weiss translation says their associates uh, their own company represents like precious faith. People of like precious faith. And uh, they reported all the chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they heard that, when they heard their company, when their associates heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. And said, you are God that has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against your holy child Jesus whom you have anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever your hand and your counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. And grant unto your servants boldness. Grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. By stretching forth your hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child, Jesus. And notice, and when they had prayed, that company that group, that body of believers, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And notice, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And they spake the word of God with boldness. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we see some things here. First of all, we see their own company. They went to their own company. Uh, unity. People of like precious faith. Uh, you don't want just anybody praying about what you're believing God for. You, you, amen. There's, there, and it's, it's more than just is that person a faith person, is that person this. It's there are people that God has called you to that can pray with you like nobody else. But it's, it's united prayer. And then we see that they, they were united in prayer. They heard that. They lifted up their voice. Everything that has that concerns a body, it's important that that body is lifting up their voice about the same thing. It's so important. Amen. Uh, they were united in prayer. And then notice, after they had prayed, the church, the place where they were assembled together. Notice that phrase again. They were together. They were assembled together. The place was shaken where they were assembled together. Now, that's more than just a natural shaking. 
That's a spiritual shaking. And we know it was a spiritual shaking because the very next phrase says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost came into that room in the same manner that he came in the upper room. And they were all filled. They were all filled. Well, what does that mean? There's going to be an infilling during this seven days of prayer. And we're going to go into 2018 full. Absolutely full. Hallelujah. Absolutely full. No doubts. Amen. And then verse 33 says, With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Great power, signs and wonders. With great power they gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. What was that a offshoot of? United prayer. United prayer. With great power they gave witness. Now, notice in Acts chapter 12. And verse 1. And I'm touching on some of the same points that Pastor Michelle taught on Wednesday night. Verse 1. Now about that time the king, Herod the king, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And notice, and he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. The Weiss translation says, therefore, on the one hand, Peter was continually guarded in the prison. But on the other hand, prayer was continually and earnestly being directed by the church to God concerning him. So on the one hand, he's facing a terrible situation. On the other hand, prayer is being made and it's butting up against and it's coming against what they're trying to do in the prison. Hallelujah. See, there are, the reason why prayer is so important, one of the main reasons, is there are laws that have been enacted in the earth that can't be changed if people don't pray. If the church doesn't pray, there are things that have been enacted that, can't, that cannot be changed because they're laws. And when this occurred, notice it says he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. So the indication there is the church dropped the ball. Because it says that when he took Peter, notice, prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, if that's not correct, then we have to say it was God's will for James to be killed and wasn't Peter's, God's will for Peter to be killed. Well, we know that's not right. Well, what if it was just James' time? Well, I don't believe it was. He was too young to die. But the point is, one hand, this situation's going on, on the other hand, the church is praying. Do you see that? God. Hallelujah. And they were praying continually and earnestly. Continually and earnestly. It says, prayer was being directed by the church to God concerning Him. So they weren't just praying a, a generic prayer. They were earnestly and continually directing their prayer to God for the specific purpose of getting Peter released. Not just helping him. You know, sometimes in the church, that's how people pray. Well, Lord, bless them. Well, that's not earnest or continuous or specific prayer. Amen. And notice this. 
And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird yourself and bind on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Cast your garments about you and follow me. And he went out and followed him and did not know it was true, which was done by the angel, but he thought he saw a vision. Now then he went through the gate. The gate opened of itself. And verse 11, Peter was come to himself. He said, Now I know of a surety. The Lord has sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together, notice, praying. They were gathered together praying. So they were constantly, earnestly making petition, directing prayer to God concerning Peter. And then Peter comes to the house, and they're still praying. And, and notice, this was the night Herod had planned to kill him. So this wasn't a deliverance that showed up days before the event. They prayed right up till the time. As a church, there's times you don't just pray to the door, you got to pray through the door. You got to pray into the circumstance. Hallelujah. Brother Copeland said one time, he said, every failure in a Christian's life is a prayer failure. Every one. Why? Because the Bible says God hears and answers our prayers. First John tells us that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have the petitions that we've desired of him. Now, I can't speak for other people, but as I look back over my life, if there were things I would have just stayed with in prayer, I could have changed them. If there were things I would have just stayed with, amen. amen. But prayer, prayer can, it's, it's, it's not work in the sense of uh, unfruitful work. It just takes effort. Prayer, to be a praying church requires effort. To, to come to prayer meeting on Sunday morning requires effort. I have to be here earlier. Early, I have to be there. I have to, to come to seven days of prayer. It requires effort. It requires dedication because you're willing to constantly and earnestly direct your prayers to God concerning these things. Amen. Do you see that? But they prayed right up to the moment, right up to the, to the night, and God delivered him. God set him free. And when he came to the house, they were still praying. They were still praying. Hallelujah. It does good. It, it, it's, it's good in the spirit to know the church is still praying. It's good in the spirit to know the body of believers that you're connected with. When they say they're praying with you about something, they're praying about it, and they're, they're moving heaven and earth to get an answer. Hallelujah. Amen. So notice what their prayers did. They brought about angelic assistance. They brought about angelic assistance. They set events in motion for Peter's deliverance as the church prayed. Then in Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. And it starts with Barnabas and names of Ivan and ends with Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord. Now ministering to the Lord is a form of prayer. All right. It's, it's many churches have no concept of what ministering to the Lord is. They come to be ministered to, but they don't come to minister to the Lord. But it's, it's a form of prayer. And so they're ministering to the Lord and fasting. The Holy Ghost said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I've called them. 
Notice, and when they had fasted, and we could say and not hurt this sentence, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. When they had fasted and when they had prayed. United prayer. We see it again. And notice what happened when they did that. The Holy Spirit said, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. So here again we have united prayer. And it produced direction by the Holy Spirit personally. The Holy Spirit said. Now, whether he said it by prophecy, whether he said it by tongues and interpretation, we don't know. But we know he said. He spoke through someone to give specific direction for what needed to be done. And the context and the, the, uh, the setting was united prayer. The most powerful prayer in churches is that of united prayer. I mean, understand this. This is something I'm, I've been really pressing into. It's not certain little groups within the group that are the prayers. The church is the prayers. The church as a whole. Amen. I've only ever had any issues in my church when I had little cliques praying on their own and they started hearing from God on their own about what needed to happen. You keep it in united prayer and God moves things forward. God moves things forward. And that's, and that's why I say the groups that are authorized by the church and endorsed by the church is that group on Sunday mornings that meets in sun, on Sunday morning. Why? Because that's, that's, that's the group God has placed there to be praying, to be praying and moving things forward. And so the setting here was united prayer. And when the church, when we take the word that the Lord has given us and we begin to pray those things out and we're praying them out united, We'll be, and the first thing that we're praying for and that we're believing for this year is just what we read in the very first uh, verses that we read. There's going to be a complete infilling. We're going to go into 2018 full. Full of the power of God. Full of the Spirit of God. Now, I know we're all full of the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues, but th these people were already full of the Holy Ghost and speaking with other tongues as well, and they were filled again. Hallelujah. As they prayed. Amen? Amen. I believe God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the word that the Lord had given us for uh, 2018, we, we taught on it some last night, uh, but we want to pray these things out. Hallelujah. And the first thing he said was that 2018 would be a year of gaining, gaining on every hand. Gaining on every hand. We're going to gain momentum. Things will speed up coming to us and coming from us. And he said, as you're quick to obey, I'll be quick to respond. Hallelujah. So that's where we're starting tonight. As we're quick to obey, he's quick to respond. Hallelujah. You have something to, to add? You have anything to say? No? You sure? On the way home, you say, you know what? I should have said that. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Come share with us. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. One of the things that Pastor read in that scripture was about how the church came together and prayed for Peter. And this during this time, as we are praying um, and lifting up, it was an attack against the leadership, an attack against the unity. You know, as we come together and we pray, there is unity and power in our coming together and, and really identifying specific target areas. And so, um, you know, I just had in my heart that we gather together names of people specifically that we're believing for. I mean, I know we can just... My whole family, you know, and just put that. Yeah. But there are maybe someone in your family that is specifically encountering a challenging time where the enemy is just really attacking their life. And I think it would be valid for us to put their names and each night 
uh, just release our faith over those specific people and pray. And in, in all of the locations, I know we have um, the Little Rock Church joining us. I believe the Clarksville ch Church is joining in as well. And uh, the people in Ecuador, I mean, we can release our faith over that. Amen. And as, as we are believing God uh, for the specific things corporately that we know that God has asked and assigned us to, we can also release our faith for those people in our lives who need the covering of the Lord and the protection Amen. and interaction. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Well, I believe God, we're going to pray in just a moment. Uh, we want to pray, you know, the Lord had said to us, uh, and last night we were ministering, how that gain and victory were tied to transition and uh, how well we manage that. So we want to be praying the transition that comes into our lives, things that God asks us to transition into, that uh, we manage that well and that we, we see the fruitfulness of what God wants to do because he said over and over in this word, it's so important to remember this, that he talks about uh, transition and he says Transi transition will not produce loss but gain. It will not produce less but more. Uh, he said, you in 2018, you'll see transition is a doorway to greater. And so those are things that we want to be praying that we, that we manage well, uh, that as a body, that we manage it well. Because there will be transition that comes, there will be transition that comes in departments. There will be transition that comes in the body as a whole. There will be transition that comes in our lives. And so we want to be managing that well and believing God uh, for, for those things to be managed well and without a hiccup, without, without a stall. Amen. I, I'm telling you, this is the year when things go smoother than they've ever went before. Amen. I'm telling you. I, I, I was talking to Pastor Michelle about this today. It, the slate is clean. It's clean. We have moved in with a new clean slate. It's, it's this is what God is wanting to do. And it's not just one of those things that's cliche about a new year and we have new opportunities. We, we do. We have, we have a whole new reset year to move into, but now it's how we manage it. And so we're going to step over into this fullness and believe God for great things. Amen. So throughout the week, as Pastor Michelle said, if you uh, want to bring the names of people that you're believing for, loved ones, friends, whomever it may be, uh, and we'll pray over them each night. We'll lift them up each night. Now, tonight, as we move in and we move into uh, praying together as a body, we want to begin to believe God for different things. This is the year, I believe, uh, for the things that God has promised to come to pass in many areas. Uh, this is a year when God keeps telling me we've got to be able to do big things quickly as a, as a fellowship. We've got to be able to do big things quickly because opportunities are going to come that are going to require action. And we've got to be in a position to do those big things quickly. Hallelujah. And so we want to pray that out. Get, get the ideas, the concepts, the insights, the information that we need to be able to do those things. Uh, there are, and, and I really feel this specifically for Little Rock, that there, 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 I was looking the other day, there is a building turnkey ready to go on the horizon. We got to lay hold of it. We got to lay hold of it. We have to lay hold of it. Why? Because it's time. It's time. It's, it's time for that body to own land in that city. It's time for our fellowship church in Little Rock to own land. Amen. Amen. Because that's our city. That's our city. Hallelujah. I believe God. Amen. And uh, as we manage that transition... Uh, as what God's asking us to do and the things that he's asking us to move into, uh, we will see great, great things. Amen? And I'm not going to belabor the point, but 
uh, we want to pray about that united as we're all praying in the same vein. And what we need to pray specifically is that we will arrive at the right location at the right time, amen, with the right people in charge of that location to show favor to that body, amen. I believe that with all of my heart. I, uh, uh, I'm excited about what God's doing. I'm excited about what God's doing. And uh, we're going to see, uh, to just say great things is, is an understatement. But uh, God has recently dealt with Pastor Michelle and I uh, to uh, take some steps uh, transition-wise for us. And we need to, pr- we need to pray it out uh, just as a group. In the year of 2018, I'm going to be spending a lot of time a uh, matter of fact, the majority of my time in Little Rock. And now I'll be here on Sundays. Uh, but uh, the Lord has really dealt with me to, to, to do that. And, uh, but what this is going to enable us to do is to be more well-rounded. Because uh, every other Sunday, Pastor Michelle will be here Sunday morning, Sunday night. Then the next Sunday, I'll be here Sunday morning, Sunday night. Pastor Tony will be ministering on Wednesday nights. Uh, We'll both be able to be in Little Rock on Wednesday evenings. Now, the reason I'm sharing this during prayer time is because you're here. You want to pray. You're you're full of the word and full of faith, and you want to pray. Uh, So we're praying this out. Now, the Lord's already told me how to do it and, 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 and what to do. But what I need you to do, what I need you to do as people that pray is this, is don't enter into feeling lost. Because you're not getting less. You're getting more. You're getting more. Amen. Uh, I, I, just because of, the, of the, the apostolic nature of what God's asked me to do with this fellowship, uh, I knew there would come a time when that body would need more attention from me. And I'll be real honest with you, we've been praying about this for the better part of two years. We didn't just wake up one day and decide to do it. Uh, we've been praying it out, and if I'm honest about it, I've drugged my feet a little bit because, uh, just because that's my personality. But the point is, as we pray this out and we push into it, how God will help us manage everything that we need to manage, here's what's going to happen. It's going to bring growth to this body. It's going to bring growth to that body. Things are going to change magnificently. Why? Because what you, I said it last night, He said in this word, he said, do not hold on to what has been and miss what will be in 2018. You just just can't do that. And and if you hold on to something, when God is saying, okay, I need you to transition and I need you to change this a little bit, if you hold on to it, you'll kill it. And And you just can't do that. You just, you got to do what God's telling you to do. You have to do what God's telling you to do. Amen. But we're going to see great things. I believe God. So be praying about that with us. And uh, we're going to enter in now into prayer. So however you pray, whether you like to kneel or sit or walk or however you do it. But we want to enter in and begin to believe God and praying the Holy Spirit about these things. Praying the understanding. And uh, we'll pray for the next little while. And then uh, uh, we'll... uh, We'll end here around 8 o'clock, hopefully. If the Holy Spirit has other plans, then he'll, he'll direct us that way. But we're going we're gonna to believe God together. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Father, oh, glory to, Thank you, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
shining light, a brilliant light. I thank you, Lord, that your light increases upon our path.
Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, remene mondo rebroso co. Alla masele rebo sotto rebresna maya. Remene mongo rebresi kiena mondo rebresi anamana. Oh, Rabba, se che te re de Brishna mande, rigrebo do Brishna morring rima. Eso, eso, eso. Oh, Rama, mamma, marabba, si te re de Brishna coda nella massa. Rebe de re de Brishna coda nella massa. Eh, oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. 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 Corre bresi kina man rongre menene ne mesidia so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sora mama mara besi kyo toro rogro menene yesu. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Rama, Mama, Rava, Sata, Rava, Rava, Sata, Rava, Rava, Sata, Rava, Rava, Sata. Harava, Soto, Rava, Rava, Sata, 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 Hallelujah. Araba sokoto bres ne me kete re bres se kete. Well, I've told you in many ways that it's going to be all right. But when you lay on your pillow to sleep this night, the angels are strapping on their weapons and they're going into a fight. Oh, they're going up north and they're going down south. They're going to the east and they're going to the west with one thought in mind and just one request to bring you my best. Hallelujah. They're going to procure children, resources too. They're going to procure things that you need, things that I want to do for you. So go to sleep tonight and sleep really well because the angels are fighting the forces of hell and they're going to bring to you that which I promised. You'll see it this year without a doubt. Watch, be faithful, sleep good, sleep well, be at peace. It's all going your way in this year of gain, transition, and victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. I believe God. I believe God. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. We're going to get ready to go. I don't want to keep you very long each night, but praise God. 24 in Little Rock praying. Amen. I said the signal was really. <laughs> Hallelujah. Didn't that boy go up north? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I've been praying for him lately. He's bending. 
It looked like he was going to break, but he's not going to break. He's going to bend. It's going to, hallelujah. I'm telling you, hallelujah. I'm telling you, folks, I, I feel that so strong in my spirit. The, those, those people we've been praying for, I, I know. Listen, listen. The, the, remember this from, from the Gospels, and I'm not going to preach, but remember this. They brought that boy to Jesus that had an epileptic demon or whatever you want to call it, a demon. The Bible says he had a demon. I don't know if it was epilepsy or not, but a demon. And remember, Jesus... rebuked him, and then the boy fell out, remember, and started wallering, foaming, and Jesus finished the job, but I was studying that one time, and the Lord said to me, he said, the enemy will always try to make you believe nothing's changed, oh, it's changed, why, because the word has been spoken. And, and you know what Isaiah 55 says, the word will not return void, Amen. but it will accomplish what we, what we have sent it to do. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, I saw that so clear in my spirit, them angels strapping on the weapons. So go home tonight and sleep really well. Praise God. So the angels are fighting the forces of hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll be back here tomorrow night at seven o'clock for another great night of prayer. Thank you for being here and praying with us. And let's, uh, let's keep pressing into 2018. Amen? Hallelujah.